Have you thought about all the ways you can prepare for postpartum care after your baby arrives? I remember when I was pregnant for the first time, I spent so much time thinking about preparing for birth and no one, I mean, no one talked about or told me about postpartum. No one offered insights for the best things to do or what things not to do after giving birth. My guest today is changing that. Christine Eck is joining me today to offer you important information on how you can prepare for a conscious postpartum care. And she has a special gift for you too. So make sure you listen for that. Christine is a mother to four children. She's an Ayurvedic health consultant, a birth and postpartum doula, and the founder and director of the Center for Sacred Window Studies. She's an advocate for social awareness and change for postpartum care in cultures where traditions and caregiving have diminished or disappeared. She's an educator, a speaker, a uh, organizer, a caregiver, a group facilitator. Her mission with the Center for Sacred Window Studies is to empower professionals in postpartum care and families with information and tools in creating the support needed during the sacred postpartum window. She trains conscious postpartum caregivers to support families using diet, routine, herbal support, healing touch, and the universal mother principles of caregiving that include simplicity, flexibility, compassion, listening, intuition, grounding, non-judgment. Christine resides in Western Massachusetts and teaches students all around the world. I am so honored to welcome you, Christine. I so wish I knew you and had your wisdom and support all those years ago when I was having babies. So welcome. Thank you, Deborah, so much. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. And I know that your journey began with your own personal journey from your birth and postpartum. Can you share a little bit about that and what you learned? I would love to. Thank you so much. I, I think like many people, um, I feel really fortunate that there was a lot of information and um, choice for me in preparing for my birth. I felt really supported. I felt really comfortable about my birth plan, where I was going to birth, who was going to be with me. I was, I had the best midwives I feel like I could have ever had. I had the best support from my husband. Um, my mother-in-law was there at my birth, which was incredibly special. Um, and I guess I just was really surprised when after my son's birth, I just felt like it was such a struggle. And it was so surprising to me because I felt really empowered during the whole leading up to his birth and during his birth, which went so beautifully. But I felt, I felt disempowered. I felt like I didn't know how to make it easier. And I didn't know where to go to find those answers. I didn't know that it could be hard. I kind of just assumed that we'd figure out nursing. I would, you know, be just sort of blissfully bonding with my baby. And I wasn't expecting things like the pain associated with nursing. And I didn't expect things like the anxiety that came with my husband going back to work pretty quickly after he was born. I wasn't expecting how to navigate um, things like clogged ducts or like sort of that sort of fever, you know, that, you know, beginning of mastitis that can kind of, there was a lot of things that I didn't know anything about. And I didn't feel like I had um, the toolkit in order to deal with them well. And so I guess Joven was about a year and a half and I decided to go back to school to study Ayurveda. We have a school nearby and I, I really sort of, I didn't know that much about Ayurveda, but I felt really called to go into this path. And while I was in that program, 
It was a two-year program. I became pregnant again. And I decided to really look closely at what the Ayurvedic tradition had to say about that postpartum window. And what I found was so empowering and so life-changing. And it's not that it's the Ayurvedic perspective per se, it's that there was tradition out there. There were pathways of care that I didn't know about. And there was an emphasis, there was significance on this window of time that for me was probably the biggest piece. Like I needed acknowledgement that this is a really important time. And I wasn't seeing that acknowledgement in my community from my, you know, medical professionals. I wasn't seeing that messaging that this window of time, you know, this first six weeks, but also just the first couple of years in general, when we're becoming parents, especially for the first time, it's a becoming, it's, it's an unfolding and it's huge. And, and I just really fell in love with the special significance that, you know, the Ayurvedic perspective put on that time with the roadmap that it gave you to helping to recover and, and just acknowledging that what we do during these first six weeks impacts us far down the line. So, so to me, it was just this aha moment. So it really was like a combination of the blindsided feeling that I had after my first son's birth. And then sort of the almost like redemption a little bit when my second son was born and I was able to prepare, you know, like I knew what to fill my pantry with. I knew what helpers to have on call. I knew so much more of how to take care of myself that it really changed my life in the way that I'm sitting here talking to you now, because if it wasn't for that experience, we probably wouldn't be here today together. Yeah. Thank you, Christine. You know, it's so heartwarming to hear what you discovered and how you reconnected and also just to feel right that gap. And I know that too many parents are feeling that struggle in postpartum and, you know, aren't having the support and the preparation and the plan. And something else you said really struck me that how these six weeks, how this postpartum period goes can ripple out onto health and well-being in the future. So can you talk a little bit about that and how, what are the things that people can start doing to prepare and how does that impact them going forward in their relationship to their body and to their baby? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, I guess I, you know, we'll start with, with the explanation of what a, a Kaya Kalpa window is. And this is the Sanskrit word for, you know, the sacred window. That's where our name comes from. And, and what it is, is this really transformative window of time. And we have a few of them in our lives. The classic texts tell us there's a few moments in time when we get this opportunity to completely reset the tissues of the body to completely kind of, um, we're, we're, we're ready for reset. We're ready for renewal. And looking at the postpartum window as, as one of those sacred windows really gives us the opportunity to be like, okay, how do I want to really start off this new life as a parent to this baby? How do I want to feel? And so all the things that we can do for ourselves, and there's a million different ways, depending on who we are and what makes us feel cared for, that we can really give back to ourselves after what we've done, the amazing work that we've done. But what we do during that time literally is setting us up for having the vitality that we want to have 42 years from now, having the 
having the the juice to be parenting and partnering and really living in the way that we want to feel. Um, and so, you know, it's a tricky thing because for so many of us, we didn't have that, you know, we didn't, you know, there's, I think there's a lot of grief that can come up when people are really starting to think about the sacred window and the Kaya Kalpa and, oh my gosh, I, I missed it now. Is it too late for me? Am I, you know, and I, I really encourage people to recognize that you can create your window of care whenever you need that window of care. Like it's, I think that we have to look at it that way in a way we're, we're continually giving and putting out there for our children, for our communities, for our loved ones. And so I really feel like the opportunity for that sacred window is there no matter what. Um, but in terms of postpartum people, as you know, we're in pregnancy, I love using some of that time in pregnancy to really, really feel into what we want that first window of time to feel like, whether it's, you know, who, who are going to be my people around me, my circle of care around me, you know, where am I going to get my food from, you know, thinking about all of the amazing work that we do every day and looking at how can I take that off my plate and that off my plate and that off my plate. And it's kind of like, you know, I always am sort of shocked at like the amount of resources we'll put into, you know, our weddings or our, you know, our baby showers and things like that. And I, I really try to foster that idea of what if we put all those resources or similar resources towards caring for us? It's not a luxury. It's not a luxury to hire helpers to come in, to, to ask your friends and family to, to be present with you and care for you and maybe clean a little bit for you and um, provide meals for you. So there's really, um, it all just comes for me from that acknowledgement of this is a sacred window of time. And if I do right by myself during this window, I'm going to feel it well beyond that window. And thank you. And I love how you say, you know, it's never too late to, right? Like no one, if we have someone listening, that's, you know, already seven, eight weeks postpartum and going, oh, I didn't do that, that there's still time to put it in place. But for all those that have an opportunity to prepare, um, how do you help people make those informed preparation and meaningful choices that will impact, you know, how they heal and transition to motherhood and to parenthood? Oh, there's so many ways. There's so many ways. And I, I really like to, I really like to get to know people and encourage them to look inside at what are the qualities around me that help me feel nourished? Maybe it's what foods was I given as I was growing up that really, you know, when I was, you know, needing healing when I was sick, what did my mom feed me or what did my grandma make that really made me feel safe and warm? Um, what are the, the, maybe it's like a certain type of music that really helps to keep you feeling like, you know, that feeling inside when you hear that song that just immediately puts you at ease. Maybe it's a smell. Um, maybe it's, you know, like, you know, knowing yourself in relationship. Like I know that if I'm feeling stressed, I need to go have a bath or I need to go have a nap or I need X, Y, and Z. And I think talking about those things with our partners, with, um, with the people who are going to be around us during that time. Um, but beyond that, to me, like those things are like the pillars, right? If we're taking care of emotionally and psychologically, and we know that our safety pieces are in place whenever we need them, then we can go on to the things like, this is the type of food that I know is going to help me rebuild these tissues. This is the type of food that I know is going to help me begin to digest my food well again. Um, I think there's just a lot of sort of basic understanding of, of what 
happens after pregnancy and birth for our bodies. So without that sort of, you know, I certainly didn't know that the food that I was eating before I gave birth, I wasn't going to be able to digest well right after birth. So I think, you know, that kind of thing is, is so much easier now to have access to with amazing postpartum, you know, books and cookbooks and things like that. So I definitely encourage people to play around with, you know, finding simple nourishing postpartum foods. Um, but it's so much about open communication with our partners and, and making sure that we have the support people and systems in place. And then all the rest of it, the food and, you know, the routine stuff, that stuff that I, I'm, I love to help people set up. Um, but really it should be that safety net first. And as you were saying it, I was already like recipes were coming to mind. Like it just, you called me right into what are those things that have nourished me? And, and I love music too. So all of a sudden, you know, thinking about that song and that set list that just when I'm struggling, right. Brings me love and pleasure. So, so many important things that people can put together. And I know you mentioned too, like, especially um, we've lost a lot of the ritual, kind of the ceremonies that often were traditions around the world postpartum. Can you talk about that too? How do you help people once they have that basic and they're feeling nourished? How can we go on to really kind of thrive and bond and really for me, find pleasure, joy, and love in that postpartum? Yeah. Yeah. I love that question. Um, for me, it's, it's such a huge part of my everyday experience as a parent to like, really just savor those moments where I feel like a sacredness and a sacred bond between myself and this role that I'm in, in this lifetime. And I, I think that depending on who I'm working with, I want it to really reflect who they are. You know, I think when you work with someone um, during their pregnancy, birth or postpartum window, you're with them during these, like one of the most intimate times of life. And so what is it that connects them to the sacred? What is it that helps them feel, um, feel that spirit, that you know, that, that higher, you know, element of, of why we are now a parent to this specific child. And it's, it's all to me. I mean, I think there's a lot of beautiful ceremonies out there that we can sort of use as a, a place to begin for people that may not have a background um, in, in experiencing some of these type of ritual or ceremony. But to me, there's like this this aspect of healing that is so tied to uh, an honoring or an acknowledgement or just a reverence for this shift that we've gone through. And I think that's really missing in our culture. If we can give that to people so that it's almost like, I see you, I see what you've done and you are amazing. And when people are seen in that way, and they can see themselves in that way, there's a shift. There's like a subtle shift that they're able to feel. So, you know, in terms of, of how that's done, I think there's so many beautiful ways people can do it, whether it's, you know, the beautiful closing of the bones or, um, you know, there's, whether it's, you know, getting partners involved and maybe it's sort of writing what is what is the person into are they are they a, a musical person are they a singer are they um you know a dancer where where are their you know heart centered um things that make them feel connected in that, that way but certainly giving pause and as a caregiver thinking about how you can even if it's a very simple act just acknowledge the rite of passage is is such a beautiful and important aspect of postpartum healing and just entering into this new phase of life with yourself, but it's like yourself magnified. And I really want people, that's like my, 
my greatest hope with the trainings that we offer and, you know, people that I'm able to work with, I want them to feel joy and empowerment because it, it doesn't have to be an avoidance of hard, like it's not that it's going to take away the hardness of this time. It's, it's a, a really big moment in life and it's going to be messy, right? It's going to be a struggle sometimes. And I think that's okay. But when we have that resilience built up, like, you know, you talked about before that joy and pleasure, if we are fostering that beforehand and through it and giving ourselves almost these moments where we're intentionally creating sacredness and joy and pleasure in like the tiniest little things. It could just be like, you know, feeling like your baby's perfect little feet, you know, like just magnifying that moment into something that can help get you through, you know, the painful latching that's going to happen in a half an hour or whatever it is. Um, but I think that those are the ways that we can really create that juiciness to help us be resilient through the whole thing. Yeah. And I love how you help people create that. Cause I think that, you know, if most people go back into our ancestry, right. From all around the world, there were these traditions and rituals that honored this sacred passage into parenthood. And I'm actually, as you know, in Bali right now, and this is a country full of ceremony for new parents from, you know, they bury the placenta shortly after and the family and the community comes out they have a naming ceremony the baby touches the earth for the first time like the first year is full of ceremony and ritual that brings family and family can be family you define right it's not always blood but we create our family to journey through and I really see the difference when people have these moments and so knowing that you help people create that I'm wondering if you can think of an example of maybe something you've done for a client in creating a ceremony, or you even said closing the bones, which some people might say, like, what is that? How do you help people if they want that kind of ceremony or ritual that they can come together with? Oh, it's such a good question. I think for, for me, it's tended to be a very simple process. like just sitting together. I, I like to give people the routine with me. A lot of my work has been with the Ayurvedic, um, body work, um, oil massage after birth. And so to be able to kind of incorporate that moment of, um, just reception and just like loving on this person who is doing this hard work. So it almost becomes a practice. So every visit will have, you know, a, a little prayer, a little meditation, a little guided process for them to be able to receive and hopefully um, carry on that practice as they, you know, they can do their own self massage with, with warm oil after I go. That's something that I always make sure people know how to do for themselves, you know, before I end my caregiving with them. But to me, it's the daily routine of giving a moment to myself and so much more about, um, I know that if I'm feeling depleted, I can go and I can do this breathing practice and I can put the oil on my body and I can just simply be, and I'm rejuvenated. Um, I, I love the different backgrounds that people come from, you know, that I work with. Some people are, you know, more religious. Some people are, you know, really connected to sort of nature. Um, but I love to ask people, you know, what are your thoughts and, you know, the bearing the placenta or, um, you know, those are things that, you know, we, we did with my own children. And so I, I always just sort of invite people to find what works for them, but I will say we recently um, had uh, one of our alumni described this beautiful ceremony that she's created 
that when she works with clients and it's sort of about like, um, she takes like a rose and they take petals of the roses. And it's, it's really about sort of creating your intention for your child and like your intention for your own experience as a new parent. And she sort of incorporated, um, she comes from a, a yoga background. So she kind of incorporated just some beautiful um, breath and movement with it. But I just really appreciated the way that she described that. And so that to me is really important and having each individual caregiver sort of approach that aspect in the way that best reflects what they're comfortable with and, and what you know, their background is. Um, so certainly like asking them questions and inviting like, what are, you know, what makes you feel sacred? What, what does your family do? Or what does your, you know, lineage or your ancestry, um, what feels right to you? And it can be as simple as, um, as simple as a, le a love letter to your baby, you know, that you hold on to, um, or it can be something more formal. But yeah, the intention is that we feel seen and that we feel like an enhanced bonding with our baby and the brand new stages that they're coming into. Um, it's an acknowledgement. A beautiful acknowledgement. Like I know everyone listening, right? Are you feeling it from your words, like from the oil massage and doing it to ourselves to just creating the ceremony, the ritual, the, the connection. Um, I feel such peace in my body now. And I hope all of you listening and if you're partners too, right? This is so important for partners to be a part of and have that feeling too. So I wanted to ask you if you can talk a bit to that. How do you integrate kind of the partners or whoever is, you know, offering the extra care in this? Oh, I love, I love helping partners to, to realize that they have such an incredibly important role to play. Um, oftentimes, I think partners feel nervous about how they can be supportive or um, a little bit at a loss of how to help, especially if something becomes difficult. Um, but there's so much from just, you know, making sure that there's enough pillows so that comfort is, is there, that there's um, hot water and a thermos that they can be doing, you know, the, the warm cereals in the morning. Like there's so many like really easy, simple tasks that mean so much more than their simplicity, you know, might suggest. Um, and I feel like that really helps to put partners at ease when they have, you know, at least a few things that they know are going to be really important, but also like letting them know that they're not alone. Like, here's who you guys can call if you have trouble with this, if you need help with that, like there are helpers, you're not alone. It should not just be the partner, it should not just be the doula. It should not just be, you know, the grandma. It should be all the community, all the people kind of having awareness that this is a big time for this family. What can I do to, you know, come in and help? Um, and certainly, you know, having a postpartum doula, having, you know, someone who you know or places where you know that you can get food brought to you. Um, having the helpers around you that really make you feel safe um, and supported is, is a big part of partners feeling good too, because we all know like they have their own, you know, this is a transition for them too, all the ways. It's like, you know, partners can experience depression and anxiety. Partners can experience so much of the imbalance that, that we see due to our society, not being able to really support this window of time. So I love it. I love fine. And I think that if we can do it in a way that's really supported, then it's going to help that couple really get through it in a way that they're smiling, they're joyful, they're feeling, you know, they're feeling all that goodness together. And that's what we want. Yeah. You know, 
you wrote, and I love this, that you say what you do matters, what you eat matters, right? You've given us so many examples of all the ways that you can help guide people so that they're putting together this team and community, that they're gathering those tools and those recipes. Is there anything else you want to add to that? I think... I think the takeaway that I want people to know is that there is information out there. There are incredible caregivers out there. And I know because we've met the most inspiring, wonderful people through the Center for Sacred Window Studies. Um, I, I don't ever want people to feel blindsided. I don't want people to feel like they don't know how to receive support if if you feel like you don't know what to do, reach out. There's a helper there. I don't ever want someone to feel like they have to just suffer and feel alone. Um, so, so I guess what I'm saying is find your community through your community. You can get the support that you need, but, and I, I will say this too, my teacher, Yisha Oaks, um, her passing was what led us to open the Center for Sacred Window Studies. And I found her work when I was going through Ayurveda school. So I was like, oh my gosh, I have to study with this woman before my baby arrives so that I can try what she's teaching on myself. And, and so I, I told her that I was like, Yisha, there's nobody in my area who offers the type of care that you're teaching. I'm really nervous. I don't know how to get the support that I need. And she said, Christine, it's okay. There's so much that you can do just with the awareness that you are entering a sacred window of time. You can do so much ahead of time to create preparedness for your pantry, for your herbal support, for your helpers. You can do all of that ahead of time. And then in the moment, you know that you have the awareness and that will take you so far. And I never forgot that. And I've told that to a lot of people, but that really changed me and my perspective. And I did, I patched together the different areas of support that I knew I would need and it worked and it was, it was life-changing. So I'm so grateful to her, you know, all every day for the inspiration and wisdom that she gave me in that moment and beyond, but for everybody listening, you can do so much just with your awareness. Thank you so much, Christine, and for sharing the story of your mentor who inspired you, but you're doing this now for so many others. And I know that you have a special gift for everyone that's listening. Um, you've given them a great gift of your wisdom today, but can you share more how people can reach you and your beautiful gift that you're offering? Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah, so we have, you know, lovingly put together a little free email course that really helps people sort of uncover the foundational aspects of conscious postpartum care. Um, so I'm, I'm sure we'll put that link for people in the show notes. Um, but you can always reach out to me through our website, sacredwindowstudies.com. Um, we're, you know, connecting with people who want to become conscious postpartum caregivers and helping support them through that journey. Um, and our hope is to just be a, a trusted resource for people who are seeking more information and, and support. And it's a beautiful field and it's so lovely to be connected with you. And I really align with that, that joyfulness that you exude, Deborah. It's really, really a pleasure. And, and um, I feel that too with our work. Oh, thank you so much. So much, Christine. And for everyone, I couldn't encourage you more to visit sacredwindowstudies.com and we'll put into the show notes. So look below where you're listening or watching for the sacred journey, the special gift that you've offered. I know that it's going to really inspire everyone. So please take advantage of it. And Christine, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing and supporting so many people on their sacred postpartum journey. Oh, thank you, Deborah. It's been my pleasure. 
And for everyone listening, we'd love to hear what you're taking away. So please send us messages, send it to Christine, to myself, and we really appreciate hearing how you're preparing for your sacred postpartum journey. Wishing you all blessings wherever you are in the world.